I tell you, I do think there is a secret to grilling or otherwise cooking a whole fish, but especially for grilling it. Crispy skin, luscious meat inside, and the timing does not have to be as delicate as it normally is for whitefish, I'm going to show you. This whole summer feast is particularly efficient, I must say. It all comes from this, plus the fish, but first I'll grab my scale, get a big bowl, and pour in enough water to submerge my fish. I'm keeping track of the weight of the water so that I I can stir in approximately 5% salt by weight. The trick to an easy, perfect whole white fish is to brine it. I know it seems weird, but I was shocked by the difference when I tested this. A handful of sugar if you're into that too, and absolutely you do not have to bring this to a boil and then cool it down again. Just stir it for a few minutes and everything will dissolve. This is a red snapper, line caught from the Gulf of Mexico, per the recommendations of seafoodwatch.org, I always check. But this would work with any white fish. I had them scale it and snip off the fins at the fish counter. Scraping the scales off is very easy, but it's extremely messy, so I always ask them to do it. And of course, the fish has been gutted. In we go. Hmm, that's not going to work. This fish is more than four pounds, about two kilos. It'll feed at least four people. So yeah, roasting tray should do that. For a thick fish, we'll need to brine this for at least an hour or two, but with a small fish, like a half hour will do it. Now let's see if I can work on my fishy, Frenchy vocabulary with Rosetta Stone, sponsor of this video. Les pâté avec des fruits de mer. Let's see how close I got. J'aimerais commander les pâtes avec des fruits de mer. We're planning a European trip next year where I'm going to shoot a whole bunch of stuff, and it would be nice if I could order my fruits of the ocean in the native language and not totally embarrass myself. I mean, I'm going to embarrass myself, but a little bit. Rosetta Stone has way more than simple phrase books for faking your way through a fancy dinner, though they do have those. Rosetta Stone is also an amazing way to get conversant in any of the world's major languages and fast. You can start from zero and work at your own pace. It's all about talking and listening and reading at the same time, which makes it such a natural way to learn. I have to say my favorite thing about Rosetta Stone is the pricing. You pay once. It's a lifetime purchase. Whatever language you need Need to learn down the road for whatever phase of life you're in, you can go back to Rosetta Stone. You've already paid for it. You get 50% off with my link in the description. Mandarin, Arabic, Spanish, French, whatever. 50% off with my link below. Thank you, Rosetta Stone. Anyway, vegetables. This is a gigantic onion. I think I'm only going to need half of that. I'm going to eat this onion raw in a salad, so I'm slicing it as thinly as possible. Shaved onion is the vibe that I'm going for, and if you want to get out of the slicer and use that for this meal, that would not be a terrible idea. Most of this I'm going to put into my little salad bowl, but the rest I'll chop through a lot and try to get minced onion. I really like some minced onion or shallot inside my vinaigrette, which is going to be the flavor engine of this entire meal. Zest this lemon. In fact, I think I'm going to need two lemons. Tons of flavor in the zest. In it goes for the dressing. And then it's time to juice in both of these lemons. Catch the seeds if you care. There's a reason people use lemon with fish. It cleans away the smell of the dock. All right, fennel, one of my Hall of Fame vegetables. I'll pick off all the green fronds, chop them up fine, and throw them in the dressing. Take the root off the bulb, and again, I'm going for shaved fennel because we're eating it raw. A V-slicer would get it thinner, but this is good enough in the salad bowl. The stalks are super tough, but today I'm actually going to eat them. I'm going to slice them thin so that there's not any long fibers left, and in a little olive oil, they go to soften. We're just giving them a little head start. Back over to the salad dressing. A couple of tablespoons of Dijon mustard tastes great and helps emulsify. Olive oil. I like equal parts oil and lemon juice, though that is very tart. You might want way more oil. Some pepper, pinch of salt to start with, and I definitely recommend a little handful of sugar in the dressing. Stir that up, and then you can see the emulsifying power of that mustard. Give it a taste and adjust. It should taste like a very strong sauce. This could do with a little more sugar. Then you should need only like a third of this to dress that salad, and I would dress it in advance. Let the acid and the salt soften everything and mellow out the raw onion. The fennel stalks have softened, so in goes a cup of quinoa. This is pre-rinsed. Quinoa has bitter compounds on the surface to get rid of, and it tastes extra good if you toast it dry in the pan just for a minute. 
Quinoa is a seed, but it is not a grain. It's more like a tiny bean. So for my goals, it's a healthier alternative to rice, but you could do this with rice or couscous. The ratio is 1.5 parts water to one part quinoa by volume. Up to you if you want to do a pinch of salt in there, bring to a boil, and then reduce to a simmer and cover. It'll take like 15 minutes. When the liquid is absorbed, you can just turn the heat off and let it sit. It's also fun to stir in just a few spoonfuls of that salad dressing. It makes the grains kind of shiny, and people won't be quite sure what you did, but they'll know that this has more flavor than what they were expecting. My snapper has brined for two hours. I'll pour off that brine. And then honestly, the easiest way to flavor this guy is just with a bunch of my vinaigrette, inside and out. It's got everything I need, some seasoning, some freshening lemon, and oil to grease everything up. No additional salt is needed because we brined. And you could obviously just roast this uncovered in a really hot oven right now until it's done, but I'm going with the grill today. I want that crispy skin, and fish skin sticks horribly, so honestly, non-stick spray is the easiest way to deal with that. Do not spray directly down onto the hot bars. Assume a safe distance and spray from the side. For God's sake, always spray from the side. But do this when the bars are super hot and spray on a lot and then quickly plop on the fish and cover. On a gas grill, I'm using max heat. With charcoal, I'd want a moderate fire because charcoal is usually way hotter. And then we just want to roast this until the bottom skin is really dark and crispy and the fish seems like it might release. This giant fish took about 15 minutes on the first side. Some sticking is almost inevitable with fish, especially a big fish, so I'm scraping underneath the couple of points where I can feel sticking. I don't want those stick points pulling the rest of the skin off when we flip. Okay, now I'll slide the fish back a bit. Time to spray on some more grease from the side. Always from the side. It's okay if you hit the fish a little too. That's probably a bonus. Then we'll flip this guy over onto the metal that we just greased. Honestly, this is much easier with smaller fish. Some bad sticking there, but it's worth it for that golden papery skin. Cover, and the second side will probably take almost as long as the first. Use a thermometer if you want, and look for about 135 Fahrenheit, 57C inside, but it's really easy to tell visually when a whole fish is done. You can literally look inside and see if it still looks raw deep in there. And because we brined this, we can overcook it a fair bit, and it'll still taste really good and juicy. One of the things that brining does is it breaks down some of the meat proteins such that they form a gel with water, and you really notice that effect in whitefish in particular. Oh, and we can top this with the remaining vinaigrette, and remember, pull the meat away, moving parallel to the bones, then it just slides off the bones. Nice skin there. Anyway, that gel from the brine holds water up against the meat fibers, and so this fish would have still been juicy even if I'd cooked it several degrees hotter. Fish brine is a great insurance policy for the chaos of the grill. Oh wait, don't forget that in the head there's a prized piece of meat called the cheek. It's equivalent to the oyster on the whole chicken. That's your little reward and no one else has to know.